And so you only eat when you're hungry. As you said to our teacher, Barab al Hajj, less to Ju'an. That's the way we hear from him. I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry. I mean, if I'm hungry, I'll eat, but I'm not hungry. I rough them. And so the face is you only eat when you're hungry. And then when you eat, then you never eat to the point of satiety. Never eat to that point. And then it allows, quote unquote, effective digestion. Because that's what they also say in the books of Shema'il that the food that the Prophet says, one, he only eats when he's hungry. Then two, when he eats, he eats very little. Because our digestive tract is only designed to what? To digest so much food. Then what he eats is food that facilitates digestion. Then the way he eats it, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like hands, there, using his hands, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as they now say, when you use the hands, the three fingers, the person eats with, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that when food engages that, it releases in the digestive tract, digestive enzymes. So now the digestive tract, now is releasing digestive enzymes, ready. And to engage the food. Then he puts the food in his mouth, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Eh? And then the type of food he's eaten. Like saying, Aisha radiallahu anha wardaha. She would say, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never ate the dhira because he loved it. It's not like he loved it. He said, the Prophet loved the dhira. He said, the Prophet was indifferent to food. But what he was, he ate the dhira because it's the quickest to digest. Okay? Because of its swiftness of digestion, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so the type of food, very, very important. Very, very easy to digest. And then thereby the Prophet places it inside of his mouth. And the Rasul, when he places it inside of his mouth, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's going to chew. Something that we forgot how to do, yani, how to put food in our mouth and to chew. Mm, mm, mm. And then even, you know, there's books, like there's a, there's a really good work, we mentioned with Dr. Habib, Patrick Holford's book, which is called Optimal Nutrition. And one of the things that he's saying, that the nature of modern food, it's designed for us not to chew. It just won't melt, then it just swallows. And that's problematic. It's going to create dizzy illnesses inside of the digestive tract because we need to chew. And then he says that the human being has been designed that when you start chewing food, that the actual mouth eh, begins to send messages to the stomach about what digestive enzymes to release in order for the effective breakdown of food. And the point I'm making, look at everything that Rasul Sallallahu does is about the food effectively being broken down. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How many times do ulama say, you know what I mean, we once we hear that our teacher said somebody should chew your food 40 times. Try it. Put food in your mouth, try to chew it 40 times. If you get to 40, and there's still food in your mouth, you're good. And the food just dissolve by 40. And that's the point you want. We asked one of the Habaib, do you hate 40? He said, no, I haven't hate 40. But what I've heard is that the wisdom of the teeth, 28 or 32, the wisdom of the number of teeth is the wisdom of what? Of how many times you should chew. So you should chew 28 times. Or you should chew what? You should chew 32 times. Um, depending on how many teeth you have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, until... Mm -hmm. Then it, 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 it's liquefied, then it goes down, ease of digestion, mashallah. When it's ease of digestion, it will be sent to the right places inside of the body, and whatever is not needed, the body will effectively get rid of. Like we look at us, we have a problem with that. It's, our, it's just staying in it. Are often permanently, permanently constipated. It's amazing how they, in the Arabic language, you know, the word for constipation and the word for the love of the dunya is the same. Yani. That's what, the same word. And someone's constipated when somebody's taken to the world in and of itself. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the meats of the Prophet sallallahu as an example. Look at the sharia of meats. If you look at the continuum of meats inside of the sharia, the, the more easier they are to digest, you'll find that the Prophet ﷺ consumes those meats. As it gets more and more difficult, although it's war, it can be in the realm of halal, the Prophet ﷺ staves off from them. So as an example, you look at, as an example, the Prophet will eat war, like, like the, not just lamb, but the dhira'ar of the lamb. And the easiest to digest of the lamb. That's where he's at, sallallahu wa sallam, if any meat is saved to the Rasul, sallallahu wa sallam, as a rule. But now as you move away from the ease of digestion of lamb, like you get to beef, the Prophet has never ever a beef, sallallahu wa sallam. Because although there's a hill, there's a permissibility of eating beef, beef difficult to digest. Difficult. That's what the Prophet says in the Muatta. He says that the, the, the cow, the, the flesh of it is a poison and the milk of it is a healing. Sallallahu Alaihi So all the hadith upon beef, I would like we shouldn't eat beef. Yani we should not eat beef. And look at look at the, 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 the tradition of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he, where he says, Ida Bayatum Bil Ina, Wattabatum Adnab al Bakar, 
وتركتم الجهاد صلت الله عليكم عدوا من غيركم حتى ترجع الى دينك as an example and ahmed he says that he says اذا بايعتم بالعينه he's speaking about the future sallallahu alaihi wasallam when the type of transactions that you engage in are all usurious they all involve interest to a point which is the age in which we live in no matter you, 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 I got cash money. You got cash money that has that has been dredged in the sea of interest, Daddy, before you spread it. Look what he said. Ida bayatum bilina. Then he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wattabatum Adnab al Baqa. And the ulama is profound, Yani, and when you follow the tale of cows. And he said, when you follow the tale of cows, you know, of the meanings of it, when you follow the cowboy, I can be talking about teachers, Americano. When the culture of Americano rules, and you just follow it, which is the age in which we live in, or tabatum adnab al baqar beef eaters, because that's the cowboy. You become beef eaters because the Sahaba were not beef eaters. Radiallahu anhu wa the Rasul was not a beef eater. Cut, cut, cut. Although this hill, it's what the Prophet refrains from it. Why a difficulty of digestion? And then you get to the other end of the spectrum, isn't it? Which is like pig. And that's out of it. And pig, you know, one of the things that are pig, like some say, impossible to digest. Okay? There's a quickness in initially to say pig, what is it, two hours? They say pig like two hours, beef like six hours to, to digest. But with pig, with the two hours it takes, it doesn't fully digest. You get the point? So some of it always remains inside of the truck. Some of them say there's only two types of meat that are impossible, impossible for a human being to fully digest. One is pig, one is human flesh. Only two types, which shows you where pig flesh is. And so the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is here, and he's very careful with the stomach, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's our point. If it goes in, it must be effectively distributed, the good of it. You know, Alhamdulillah, alladhi adhaba ma yadurni wa abqa fiya ma yanfa'uni. It's not his dua, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he comes out of the bathroom, Alhamdulillah, all praises due to Allah who rid me of what would harm me. And he allowed to remain in me what will benefit me. The Prophet says as he exits the bathroom, exits what? The actual khala, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, points of consideration. Well, otherwise, then that's why we need doctors, isn't it? Otherwise, we need doctors. And Western society, the fact that we've got like an, an elaborate NHS, yani, that, that is a damning indictment of man's relationship with food, the asal of it, isn't it? It's a damning indictment. Araftum, we ask Allah Ta'ala for safety and security. Yani.